What is up guys? This is Kalman from GameInRealm.com. Today we are going to be having an E3 uh, review of Sony's press conference. Uh, this is probably, as it stands right now, the best conference I have seen. Um, I did go back and watch uh, some of the ones that I missed due to being at work. And I have to say, I think Sony has put together, a, once again, a very solid E3 press conference. And this one, uh, I feel like, probably is their best one in years and Sony has set the bar pretty high for themselves the last couple years and this one in my opinion really just knocked it out of the park um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just start off with the games and the first one that really sticks out to me is God of War and this God of War game it is it's very different than what I expected uh, I feel like a lot of people were probably thinking that they were going to continue the God of War franchise um, in the same manner that it's been before and this one though it was it didn't really look like a God of War game until you know you actually started seeing you know the tattoos on which I'm guessing is you know an older or a different version of Kratos with his son or his I guess protege I'm not really sure if that's his son or not but that was kind of when it clicked for me like this is this is God of War like wow and the gameplay style is very different it looks like it doesn't look like it's going to be that you know it crazy button mashing experience that I I guess the other God of War uh, God of War games were um, I've actually yet to play the series but I do remember it being more of a action you know, button mashing type of game. It's a hack and slash. That that was kind of what my impression of it was. This game did not look like it had any of those. Uh, it looked like it was a completely different matchup. In fact, uh, a joke that I was putting on my phone, I was writing notes during the press conference, and one of the jokes I put uh, before the game, because I, I like to guess what, you know, what game it is. And I was stumped on this one. In fact, my first guess, though, was God of War Primal. And it was uh, just a joke guess. And I kind of ended up being right on it, so uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what to think in terms of that because I haven't played the other games. If this is going to be weird for returning players, um, but I know for like a new player like me, it doesn't really matter uh, in terms of its gameplay style. In fact, this one might be something I might be a little bit more interested in uh, in playing. Um, but. You know, I definitely want to go back now and play the other God of Wars and just see how different they are, like in actual gameplay. So when we get that, it's going to be very, very interesting. And I'm very excited to, to get my hands on that game uh, or at least get more details about that because it looked really good. Um, but that that alone, I feel like really just it started the conference off so well. Uh, and then we have, you know, of course... Uh, that uh, Horizon game and the Horizon game you know I feel like I, I liked it I was intrigued by it I think it looked fantastic um, I think that they used a little bit too much time on it and that's kind of part of my uh, I guess you could say criticism about the Sony conference this year it's the only thing I had was that I think the demos for the games were a little bit too long uh, I'd like to see something a little bit shorter and then show it to us you know more after the fact you know, after the press conference, but I understand, you know, they want to show it, you know, they want to show the games at the conference. It makes sense. It's all about the games. That's how it should be. And that game, I feel like when I was looking at that game, like I have to wonder if that is what the next Legend of Zelda is going to look like, you know, in terms of that style, like how that, you know, open world was like, that's what it made me think of the entire time I was watching. I'm just like, wow. Like, this kind of reminds me of Legend of Zelda, like the new one that's going to be revealed tomorrow, apparently. So, that's kind of what my mind was thinking. I'm not sure if that was really the right thing to think or not, but that's just that's just what came to mind. But it looked very good. The graphics looked incredible. The performance looked really good. You know, it looked like the controls and, you know, everything, how the game was, you know, progressing from, you know... You're running to you're fighting different characters. Everything seemed very seamless in it. And it looked really, really interesting. The the missions looked really cool too. And uh, then you, I'm kind of just doing this off my head. So if I forget the names of the games, I apologize. Um, and this next one, the uh, the zombie one. I think it's a zombie one. Can't really, re can't really remember what that one is uh, was called. Uh, that one they didn't show too much. I think at the end of the conference they showed off a demo. Um, 
it showed like the two wolves like picking apart the the dead body that one was pretty pretty good too um i'll have to see more on that one to get really in you know excited about it but i think that it's going to be a pretty decent game and i feel like you know i feel like the thing that these games all had in common were they kind of had like a very similar overworld in a way um just in terms of their style you know mountains in the back you have the trees uh it's very like you know woodsy i guess but um you know i thought it i thought it looked pretty interesting um and then we have uh you know, we had the Detroit game, which looked really cool. They only showed one scenario in that, and I haven't played the uh, the previous installments in that franchise. Uh, but it looked very interesting. It seemed like they were trying to stress that there's going to be a lot of different choices and a lot of different things that are going to determine how the story plays out. Um, it was it was actually really really interesting to watch that. Um, once again, I kind of feel they dragged that out a little bit too much, but at the same time, I understand they wanted to show that, hey, you know, this is this is what this game does. You know, we can keep coming up with these different scenarios that are coming up, and there's so many different choices, and um, I'll have to really look into that one to get a more firm grasp on how that is going to work and how that's going to function as a full game. I'm not sure if it's going to be similar to, like, the Telltale games. I'm not really sure. Um, so I haven't really done a ton of research on that. I'm not really too familiar with that franchise, but I know a lot of people are excited about it. And I mean, I don't know. It looked really cool. I really liked that one too. Um, the new Resident Evil game looked very good. Uh, it looks like they're taking it really, really like back into the horror survival. Uh, it's going to be first person VR. Um, I, once again, I'm going to have to research that one a little bit more. I think they said something about it's going to be available on PlayStation Plus um, or PlayStation Network. I'm not sure. Um, if that was a free PlayStation Plus game, man, oh, man, I'd be let's playing the crap out of that game. I'll tell you what. <sighs> man, out of breath already. Um, I'm doing this off the top of my head, like I said before. So my phone actually died. So all the notes I had for this video, they're gone. It's powering on now. Let's get rid of that before it goes into the microphone and... You guys hear all of the uh, startup sounds on my phone, and then it'll just continuously die over and over again. I don't think you guys need to hear that. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to the actual conference, um, we have, uh, it was the, the VR. They said it's going to, I think, release for uh, $399 in October, which I think we already knew the price point. Uh, that's a lot of money. That's actually more expensive than the PlayStation 4, I believe, which... It's kind of crazy. Um, I did write an article about a report of a developer saying that that VR is not going to work that well on the original PlayStation 4s. They did not show off Neo yesterday, which I'm, or I guess it was today. <laughs> it's, time's just going. Uh, but they did not show off the uh, the Neo, which I'm actually pretty surprised. I thought they were going to show that off t uh, today, um, but they're saying that. You know, all the PlayStation 4s are built in. The VR is going to work great. So I'm really hoping that what that developer said, uh, how VR would be crap on this, uh, you know, stock PS4 or the standard PS4. I'm hoping that that's not the case. And I'm hoping that VR is going to be great on the PlayStation 4. Um, I'm, I have to say, uh, the low point in the conference uh, was definitely the Final Fantasy game. Uh, I can't remember what number it is, um, but the one that they showed, uh, people are really like pumped up about that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask Marlon. If, if, I'm pretty sure Marlon was in that press conference. I'm gonna have to ask him uh, <laughs> uh, if, if the, if that game was received well, because I know starting off when they showed the game, people are cheering, they're excited, and then they showed that virtual reality integration and. Uh, it looks so, you know, shoehorned in. It was really tacked on, and uh, the crowd just did not react at all after that, and it was hilarious. That was definitely the lowest point. I feel like the virtual reality games, um, we're going to be going through a gimmicky stage right now, and I feel like the games they did show were a bit gimmicky. I feel like that uh, Star Wars Battlefront uh, mission looked really cool. You know, being able to fly in an X-Wing, you know, in virtual reality is very, very cool. 
Um, but at the same time, I feel like we're going to have to go through a gimmicky stage. Uh, just like any new technology, you know, this, these games are going to be more or less tech demos to show what you can accomplish. They want to get a feel for the market. It's going to be growing pains. You know, virtual reality is not going to just, you know, come in here and be seamlessly integrated with, you know, normal game experiences. They're going to try to make this, you know, as appealing to the mass market as possible. So, you know, that's what we're going to have to get used to. Um, so, you know, I feel like once we get past that, we're going to be fine. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be better received than what it was tonight. Um, but I mean, the game, the problem with the games that they have shown for virtual reality, I feel like the only thing that makes them special is that they're in virtual reality. If these were just normal gaming experiences, which I don't know if that's fair to say, but I feel like if they're just normal games, I don't feel like, you know, the games that they've shown would get any attention at all because they're, you know, there's nothing really special about them. Nothing really sticks out. And that Final Fantasy, man, it was the Final Fantasy one was so bad. And I know that people there were not happy about that. They're just like, uh, okay, this game looked pretty cool. And then you showed the VR crap and it's like, this is it. Like, that's what you guys are doing. You stand there with your gun pointing at It's like, it was bad. It was really bad. Um, oh, how could I forget? The Last Guardian's actually going to be coming out this year. Uh, I forget. It might be November or it might be December. It's one of those. Um, I thought it would be freaking hilarious if when they showed the date, if they crossed out that, that 2016, like just I showed the date up there, they crossed out the 16 and just wrote a 17 underneath it. It'd be freaking hilarious. They should have just did that and then put like JK or something on there. It would have been hilarious. Um, but unfortunately they didn't do that. Uh, they would think that was a missed opportunity. Uh, I'm not going to deduct points off that, but that would have been freaking hilarious. Um, there is a game I'm forgetting too. It's the uh, Kojima game. Uh, they gave uh, Kojima a really good welcome. They got this really cool like light panel thing that was like each step would light up and he stepped on it. It was pretty cool. Um, but uh, I loved how it said, you know, Kojima everywhere on that thing. It's like, this is a Kojima game. This is a Kojima game. Kojima did this. Kojima did that. It was freaking hilarious. And of course, we have a butt naked Norman Reedus, uh, which I'm sure uh, all the ladies watching, and uh, I guess some of the men too. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, man. Norman Reedus is he's a pretty cool dude. Um, but no, he's, uh, you know, it was. Uh, it was really cool, you know, to see Norman Reedus in, you know, 3D. I feel like everybody loves Norman Reedus, man. Everybody loves Daryl from Walking Dead. Like, you're crazy if you don't like Daryl from Walking Dead. Um, but, yeah, that game, I'm not really sure what to expect from it because we didn't really get a lot of details with it. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, this is, this is a Kojima game. So chances are it's going to be some kind of crazy thing. Um, I can't remember what it was called, though. Um, but... That was, it was a very weird trailer, I think, to have on E3. Uh, but you know what, man? It's freaking Norman Reedus, so you can't even complain. You know what, man? That guy is a freaking awesome dude. And, you know, anything with him, anything with him in it, you know, he's probably going to be a badass and he's going to, you know, be taking names. And, uh, you know, Kojima's going to do what he does. And, when I saw that, though, I'm just like, this is Silent Hill. And that's the same thing I said with uh, when I saw Resident Evil. I said, this is Silent Hill. Like, they're, holy crap, PlayStation's bringing back Silent Hill. This is going to be huge. People are going to freak out about it. That didn't happen. But I had a feeling that um, because Kojima is kind of working with Sony, I'm pretty sure that he's working with Sony. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that the whole deal with Kojima is that he's like, you know, a Sony guy now. Um I thought when I saw that, I'm just like, holy crap. He's not bringing back Silent Hill, but he's bringing back something equivalent to it. So that's what I was thinking for both those games. I'm just like, this has to be something to do with Silent Hill. You know, maybe it'll be like, you know, a typical Silent Hill game, like one and two. Or maybe it'll be something a little bit different, like, uh, oh, that, that last, I can't remember the last one, uh, downpour maybe it's something like that where it kind of strays from like the original idea but still kind of keeps the principles it's more of a spin-off type game that's what i was thinking when i saw both of those with the first one once i saw norma Reedus, i'm just like this is this is silent hill like they're bringing it back somehow they're gonna 
somehow they're going to acquire the rights to it and they're going to bring it back. Um, but that wasn't the case. And But if that was, if, you know, if they did do that, man, oh my God, people would have went crazy. But to Resident Evil's credit, man, that was a, that was a good trailer or a good gameplay uh, demo. Um, so good stuff. Uh, the Call of Duty stuff, you know what, man? I like Call of Duty, or at least I used to like Call of Duty. I'll tell you what, though. The only thing I care about with that whole Call of Duty thing is the remake of Call of Duty 4. And I'll tell you what, I am not paying $80 to play Call of Duty 4 again. So if they release them separately, you know, that Call of Duty remastered for, you know, 40 bucks or something like that, hell yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go out and buy it. I'd love to play it again. Not for $80. I don't give a crap about the Infinite Warfare game. I think it looks looks generic. It looks stupid. It looks like every other Call of Duty that we've gotten before. Um, and that's not what I want. I'd rather go back to Modern Warfare 4. Or not Modern Warfare 4. <laughs> no more Modern Warfare. Uh, I'd rather go back to the original Modern Warfare in, you know, remastered edition or whatever. And play that. Because at least back then... Things were a lot simpler. They were better. Uh, I didn't get. Yeah, I felt like the games were just better designed back then, um, and that game was obviously handled by a much more capable team than the one that they have right now. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really interested in either of those games right now as it stands. Um, but yeah, um, I think that that's pretty much all that I have uh, for that. Um, I, I do appreciate that they didn't focus, you know, a ton on VR. They gave it enough, you know, kind of giving us a little, you know, hey, this is going to work. You know, it's going to work with your console. You're going to be good. Um, but they didn't, like, jam it down our throats. And I'm glad they didn't show off the new uh, system. I feel like, you know, there's a time and place for that. And I feel like with the new Xbox coming out, it really doesn't make sense for PlayStation to really force the issue yet. Um, because they obviously have something in the you know, pipeline, there's something on the way. And, you know, I think they're, they're smart to hold off for right now. Um, especially if virtual reality does work on this original system. I mean, why not just ride this out a little bit longer? So that's what I'm hoping for. And, uh, overall though, you know, I, I'm very, very happy with, uh, what Sony had to offer, um, as a PlayStation 4 owner, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of great games coming out, a lot to be excited about for this system, and uh, Sony hit it out of the park again. Simple as that. Um, I was going to make a video for the Ubisoft uh, press conference, but I'll tell you what, I'm not a fan of that, and I can give you a quicker review right now. Not good. I don't, I'm don't. i not a, not a fan of what Ubisoft had to offer this year. Um, but in terms of PlayStation, man, they hit it out of the park again. I think they're continuously rising the bar for everybody else, including themselves, uh, for the following years and for the rest of the week. Uh, Nintendo has a lot to uh, do tomorrow. I feel like, you know, at this point, I feel like Sony's going to win unless Nintendo completely has something hidden up their sleeves. And, I mean, even if they hide it underneath their shirts, man, they're going to have to really really do something insane to top what Sony did today. Um, yeah, it, it's a great time to be a PS4 owner. One more complaint. Where was all the Vita games, Sony? Where's all the Vita games? No, I'm just kidding. I know it's dead. Uh, you know, PlayStation 4 is the main focus. That's how it should be. Uh, I feel bad for me and the other Vita owners, but you know what? Uh, Sony has no reason to support that system anymore, so... Uh, they're going all PS4 from here on out, it looks like. And once the Neo comes out, whenever that is, they didn't even mention it. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see what go, what happens uh, from that. So, but yeah, guys, this E3, it's been pretty crazy. Make sure you go check out GamingRealm.com. A link will be in the description, as always. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of E3. We'll see you guys soon for a podcast, I'm sure. And uh, yes, thank you guys very much for watching.